You know, I find that we're, we're constantly thinking in our heart. I just want to, I just want to help people meet Jesus. I, I want to help you meet the real Jesus, experience the reality of Jesus, know what it means to be in Jesus or in Christ, and just have a real life with God. Amen. You know, dead religion and dumb religion and wrong religion and untruth and man-made stuff, it just never satisfies the human heart. Amen. The only thing that satisfies the human heart is the reality of God within. Amen. You understand that? Amen. The only thing that will satisfy our heart is the, is the truth of the New Testament here. The truth of the Old Testament has wonderful things, but it will never, never satisfy the human heart. Because the, not until the New Testament does God get to dwell inside of us. So those of you who have been around understand what that means. Those of you who are just barely kind of scratching the surface uh, of the kingdom of God need to realize there, there's a place in God where He is in you and you know it. If God was in you and you knew it, it'd change your life. Yeah. Last week we talked about if you knew Him, oh, it'd change everything. If you really knew Him, it'd change everything. Not just know about Him, not just know of Him, but if you really knew Him, it'd change you. And so that means the more that you know Him, the better you are. The more you learn of Him, the better you are. The closer you get to Him, the better life is. And if life isn't good, you're too far from Him. If life isn't good, you're too far from God. You're too far from Jesus. I know you believe in Him. I know that you acknowledge Him. There's, some, there's a disconnect somewhere. We've got to figure that out. If life isn't good for you, you just got a little bit too far from Him. Yeah. Yeah. It has nothing to do with the storm around you. Amen. The storm was raging. Jesus and the disciples are in the boat. Everything's cool. Until the disciples got scared for no reason. All right. So it doesn't have anything to do with what's going on around you. If you're close to Jesus, everything's cool. You're at peace. You're at joy. Everything's good if you're close to Him. Hallelujah. All right. God bless you. Have a good day. <laughs> now, some of you may, may have a tough life going on right now, and you're wondering, well, how can I, how can I, how, how can I get close to, well, how can I get close to, what are you talking about? What do I need to do? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'll tell you this, it won't happen without the Word of God. It won't happen without Scriptures. It won't happen without Scriptures. You can bawl and squall and cry and, you know, and you can sing till you're blue in the face, but it won't happen without Scripture. Turn to Luke chapter 17 with me, please. People, uh, you know, Christians even, sometimes, sometimes really fit the image of a dog chasing its tail. You ever watched a dog chasing its tail? Sometimes a cat. This is the silliest thing. Why would the dog chase its tail? It already has its tail. <laughs> and for the Christian, you need to recognize that, you know, you don't have to go seeking after God or blessings or Things, yeah, because you already got them. We're going to talk about that today because that's a that's new to us as a new believer. That's new. It's like, what are you talking about? You've already got thirty-two thousand promises are already yours. These are already yours. You just need to know what to do with it. In Revelation, the Scripture says, "Come and take." of the water of life freely. You just need to take some things. You've already got them. You just need to take some things. You need to learn how to uh, receive some things by faith, acknowledge some things by your belief system, and watch it come to pass for you. We keep looking around for something to happen. Well, I wonder when God's going to come through. Well, I sure wish something would happen. I wish something would change. I, you know, I'm watching my kids. I wish they'd change. Stop, stop looking on the outside for something to change. Amen. Stop looking in the driveway for your car. Yeah. Stop looking on the outside for some joy. Yeah. Well, when my circumstance changes, when, when I'll finally get happy whenever I finally get to ride the roller coaster at the park. Oh, please, that's childish. Amen. 
To look for a thing coming to make you happy is childish. Children do that. All of their excitement is built on doing something on the outside. It's getting real quiet in here. We don't. We don't. We can't promise you another picnic this this week. So you can't. You can't be excited about the end of the service. You have to be excited now. How many of you did go to the picnic last week? Raise your hand. Yeah. Was it exciting or what? Yeah. How many, how many of you was your first picnic? Raise your hand. For, I mean, with us. First, not first picnic ever. <laughs> first picnic with Houston Faith Church. Was it fun or what? Yes. I had several people tell me, uh, you know, it was a lot better than I expected. <laughs> it's just something, something special happens when you get some holy fun going Amen. together. Yeah. We know how to party Christian style. Amen. Yeah. You bet. How many of you that was your first Christian picnic to be at? Raise your hand. Okay, you don't have to raise your hand. That, that, might, that might give something away that you don't want given away. <clears throat> How many of you won some prizes? Raise your hand. Who won the iFly? Have you been, did you go to the iFly? You switched and got the iFly? Did you go yet? No, we haven't yet. All right. We want to know how it is when you do. We gave it away another aquarium gift certificate. The iFly, what else? Did we give it a tablet this way this year? We usually give tablets and, and iPad type stuff, but we figured y'all all y'all all had those, so all right. Luke chapter seventeen. Verse 20, now when he, Jesus, was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation, nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. Amen. Yes. Amen. Notice that. Amen. And you can stop there. The kingdom of God is within you. Everybody say it. Say, the kingdom of God is within me. It's, in, it's inside me. Look, look down here and point down here and your, the kingdom of God is in here. I don't know what that means, but it's true. Glory to God. Let's find out what it means. Some, the Jews were looking for the kingdom to come so that they could put Jesus on the throne and rule physically. Uh, Christians sometimes are waiting on that to happen when he finally comes back to the earth. Uh, or we're waiting on all sorts of other things to come. When God comes, when Jesus comes, if the Holy Spirit would just come, if God would just come to our service, if He would just fall and visit, we just need a visitation from God. Okay, fine. You can have your visitation. I'll just have Him. You have your visitation. He'd just live with me, though. He lives, he lives in here. See the difference? And it takes, this is, a, this is a step of faith to start thinking a different way. Really, part of our problem is just a wrong mentality. We said that last time, but the part of our biggest problem is a wrong mentality. Yeah. Really, we're looking for something to change on the outside when what really needs to change is our attitude on the inside. Yeah. So you and I need an attitude adjustment about, about perspective in life. Yeah. And that, that, that can only happen with a spiritual person. That's why carnal people, uh, nominal Christians, carnal Christians hardly can tap into God. They're just kind of there on the exterior, and we're glad they're there at least on the exterior, but they never seem to tap down, tap into the truth, tap into the, the, the vitality or the living experience with the Spirit of God. We want to help you do that today. It's not hard, but it does take a few steps of faith. It all has to do with your, or it begins with your believing. It begins with a word from the Scriptures that's true so that you can think on something different and cause a different attitude in your heart and in your mind. How many of you need an attitude adjustment? How many of your kids need an attitude? Spouses. How many spouses need an attitude? That's the real problem. It's the attitude. Okay? So the kingdom of God is inside you. All right? Look at um, 2 Timothy chapter 1. Really, I want to say this. Everything is really inside you. Everything you need in life is inside you. If you knew what was already in you, you'd have success and victory in life. Amen. 
If you knew what was really in you, you'd be successful. I know you don't understand where I'm going with this, but just think about it. If you knew what was in you, there's something grand in you that we miss so much. If you read the Bible, there's everything pertaining to life is in you. Yeah. Yeah. When you get born again, everything's in you. In the Old Testament, God said, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Israel. And I'm going to put my laws in their mind. And I'm going to write them in their heart. And I'll be their God and they'll be my people. In the Old Testament, all you got was tablets with Ten Commandments and a book. In the New Testament, you get the book that gets put inside you. So it's in you. Now, we still need the book to tell us what's in us. But it's in you. In Ezekiel, he said, I'm going to put a new spirit in you. Remember that? I'm going to put a new spirit in you. That's the born again experience. Whenever you receive Jesus, you know, part of it is this. We've taught, I'm not going to teach a whole sermon on this, but we've taught on consecration. You know what that term means? Consecration. Total devotion. Okay? Now, there's a lot of people that will believe in Jesus and get born again, but then it takes a while for them to even realize it. Uh, the quicker you can make 100% full devotion to Jesus, the quicker you'll experience your born again yes. nature. All right? So we're talking about giving all to Jesus. We're talking about devoting everything. We're talking about fully consecrating your life. The quicker you do that, the quicker you will begin to experience the new nature in you. Yes. All right? But Ezekiel prophesied that God's going to put a new spirit in you, and then He's going to put His spirit in you. He can't put His spirit in you until you get a new spirit. You've got to have a new incorruptible spirit, and then He puts His Holy Spirit in you, and then, man, you got something. What do you got? Well, you got the Holy Spirit. What is that? Glad you asked. It's a, it's a right question. Paul asked that in his ministry. He found some disciples. He said, you get the Holy Spirit. They said, we, hadn't, we don't know if there is a Holy What are you talking about? A Holy what? Yeah, Holy Spirit. And so all believers need to be asked that question. If you have some Christians that don't know much about the Holy Spirit, you need to ask them. Do you know much about the Holy Spirit? Have you received the Holy Spirit? Have you been filled with the Holy Spirit? See what they say. Yeah. Ask them how they know. Ask them if they're experiencing the power and the fire. Yes. How about fire? Did you get filled with fire? Yes. You'll get them there for sure. Did you get filled with fire? Yes. John the Baptist says he'll, the, the, he's come, he, he who comes after me is mightier than I. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit yes. and fire. Yes. I don't know what that is, but we need to. At first, we don't know what that means, but we need to find out what that means. Because it's in us. Holy Spirit and fire is in us. Holy Spirit and fire and power is in us. Yeah. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The power of God is not out there. The kingdom is not out there. It's in you. Yeah. 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 Some people, you know, we talk, we teach a lot about faith, and people are thinking, well, yeah, if I only had some faith, if I only had some faith, I sure wish I had big, big faith like them. I sure wish I could, uh, you know, trust God like them. I sure wish I had faith that moves mountains like so and so. Did I say to go to 2 Timothy? No. I think I said 2 Timothy. And if I didn't, I'm saying it now. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 5. This is Paul talking about Timothy. He says, When I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you. So where is the faith? It's in you. He says, which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and I'm persuaded is in you also. If you have any faith, it's going to be in you. All right? If you have any faith, it's going to be in you. Faith always begins by hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by the Word of God, by hearing the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by knowing the will of God. If you don't know the will of God, you won't have any faith. If you don't know that God's will is to take care of your finances this yes. week, you won't have any faith for that. Amen. You have to know the will of God. You have to be certain that God has provided. Yes. Amen. 
If you don't know for sure if God wants you well, yes. oh, you'll just, you'll have no faith to be healed. Well, I don't know for sure. You kind of know for, you kind of think that he wants you well, but you're not sure that he wants you well. What are you going to do? I don't know if God wants me to have joy. Well, he wants you to have joy. So the faith that you need is in you. How do you get it? Verse 6, therefore I remind you to stir up the gift of God which is in you. You're going to have to, the gift of God's in you. There's gifts of God inside you. Some people are sitting on them. There's gifts of God inside you. Some people are sitting on them. The gift of God is inside you. What are you going to do about it? You've got to stir yourself up. You can't blame somebody else for the gift of God not being active in you. You've got to stir up the gift of God. Why? Because it's in you. The ability that you need for life is in you. The ability that you need and the, the anointing that you have from God is in you to serve Him. It's all in you, but you've got to stir it up. Verse 7, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So the spirit you have is not one that's cowardly or timid. It's not a spirit of timidity. Some of you feel very timid when it comes to the things of God or trusting God or prayer or helping someone or sharing your faith or praying for a sick person. You feel very timid. Or to just take a stand and ask God boldly and confidently. You're timid, but, but that's not really of God. The problem is you just forgot who you are. You forgot what's in you. Yes. He didn't give you that. You have a spirit of love, power, and soundness. Amen. If you're scared of things, anxious, anxious of things, uncertain about things, that's not from God. You just need to figure out who you really are. Inside you is everything you need. Is inside you is the boldness you need to take a stand. And you don't realize it until you get there. You know, you've got you to find some scripture. The, the Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. Yes. But if you don't know what's in you, you'll never act it. I remember the first time that as an adult that I wanted to prove out a promise. 32,000 promises or so in here. 32,000 promises. And most people haven't ever accessed any of them. Yeah. Or we could say some people haven't accessed any of them. Or we could say other churches have never... No. <laughs> But as a, as a new, excited Christian to learn holy things, I came up against a challenge. And it was really just a cold. It was a sickness one night. And I remember feeling like, oh, no. Oh, no. You ever felt that? Yeah. Oh, no. I'm not supposed to be sick. By stripes, I'm healed. But I looked sick and felt sick. And I realized, oh, no. Oh, is the Bible true or not? And I, I, I went through this little 30, 60, 30 or 60 second analysis of I'm going to have to go access what I believe to be true. Where do you go get that? Where do you go access? Where do you go take the thing that you're supposed to already have? Well, it sure, certainly ain't outside the house. Amen. And, and it's certainly not in the other bedroom. Amen. It's got to be somewhere spiritual. So let's look inward. It's in here. Yeah. It's only 18 inches from my head. Yeah. I just got to get there. Amen. How long does it take to go 18 inches? <laughs> How much effort is required to go 18 inches? That's all we're really talking about here. We're talking about going from natural mind to spiritual. That's all it is. We're, we're talking about going from the natural state of mind to the spiritual state of mind. That's all we're talking about. But it takes a little effort. I mean, when you wake up groggy, uh, you know, it takes a little effort to get, get, to get awake. Same thing with spiritual matters. You know, you're, you, you have to live a lot of your life uh, in natural things. It takes faith to get into the Spirit. So here I am sick. I made a decision. Whoa, 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 whoa. I just had, I just had God showed me. The Holy Spirit showed me this is it. This is the moment where I tap into something very holy and spiritual. How did I do it? I didn't know anything else to do except use the Scripture. So I just got open the, opened the Bible, quoted a couple Scriptures and a couple passages, and I quoted them. And, and I quoted them. And I quoted them. And I just quoted them. And I quoted them. And I just looked at them and quoted them. And I just quoted them. And I just quoted them. And I just said them. And I just quoted them. And said them. And quoted them. And said them. For three hours. And all of a sudden... 
after three and a half hours, ooh, I started seeing it. You know, you can start off just quoting a little something out of the bread box or a little, little, little cutesy thing on Facebook. Oh, that's so inspiring. Well, why don't you say it 3,000 times and see what happens to you? That's so encouraging. That just encouraged me. Why don't you say it? Why don't you say it 500 times in a row and let it do more than encourage you? Let it take you over. Let it, let it reveal something inside you of God that you can now have. Let it reveal a promise to you. Let it dig up something out of the kingdom of God so that you can have it. Yeah. And I won't tell the rest of the story, but I got healed. I, I tapped in. I, I found the secret. I found the promise. I found God. I, and where was it? It was right in here. It was in the spirit thing. It was in the spirit. It was in the spirit. I had to go into the spirit and get it. Amen. There's all sorts of ways to, to... Some people say it's a canopy. You've got to reach the hand of faith and pop the canopy so it comes down. That's one way to say it. Sounds good to me. Truth is, it's already in me. It's not really hanging over my head. It's really already in here. Amen. So I popped my hand in the... I mean, you come up with any sort of way to... But it's in the Spirit. And that's why it's hard to describe. That's why there's no instruction. That's why there's no instruction of how to do this. It's because it's spiritual. And it has to be revealed to your spirit. And it's not going to necessarily be the same for every single person every single time. There's something about the Holy Spirit guiding you into these things and helping you take the promise of God. But once you do, man, then it'll, it'll be exciting for you. Once you tap in and get some joy, how about this? Some of you who, who have a chaotic, depressed type demeanor. I'm not looking at anybody. Some of you who, who, who has, a, has a, uh, a consciousness of chaos, anxiety, anger, uh, lack of peace, depression. Once you learn how to break out of that and get some joy... Yes. By faith, yes. Yes. right in the middle of the field, you know, you're waiting for life to change. It ain't going to change. Amen. You have to change. Amen. You're waiting for atmosphere outside you to change. You know, you have to change. Amen. I like bright, sunshiny days. I like rainy days. It don't matter. Amen. I'm happy on the inside. Amen. Woo! Amen. If you get happy on the inside, you'll start being happy on the outside. That's right. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Praise God. And if you're happy on the inside, some of you need to tell your face. <laughs> Notify your lips. Uh, all right. <clears throat> Turn to Colossians 1. It's pretty close to uh, just go left a couple. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1 verse 26 says, The mystery that's been hidden from ages and generations, but now has been revealed to His saints. So all the Old Testament people uh, were under the mystery. They couldn't figure out the mystery. Verse 27, To them God willed to make known what are the riches of His glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. What's the mystery? Which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. Just want you to see Christ in you. Where is Christ? In He's in you. How can that be? Well, it's spiritual. He's in you though. If you'll be more Christ consciousness, then you'll have a better day. If you'll get more conscious of God in you, you'll have a better life. If you'll get rid of being self-conscious, uh, people conscious, problem conscious, and get God conscious, you'll have a better life. Sometimes we're so body conscious, we can't see past the mirror. Amen. What I mean by that is you, all you see is your failures of the past. All you see is what other people are thinking of you. Yeah. What other people have tagged you as. What, what your label is at work. Or what your label isn't at church. All you see yourself is labeled or unlabeled. Worried about what people think of you. How many of you are worried about what people think of you? That was a trick. I know nobody would raise their hand. <laughs> then we have to quit acting like we care what people think of us. Not that we're going to be slobs. Not that we're going to run around, you know, 
being totally off the wall and slobs. We, we still respect people by the way we act and talk and look. I'm not talking about that rebellious type of I don't care what people think of me. I'm talking about a, a holy, righteous attitude of I'm going to live unto God. And I'm going to be loving and powerful and holy and perfect and pure no matter what people say of me. And I'm going to live my life, uh, even though I may make mistakes, I'm not going to let that get to me. I don't care if I make a mistake, somebody thinks evil. I don't care. I, I didn't mean it. I, I'm sorry. So I'm not going to live my life by what people think of me. Some of you go through your day without making any mistakes. I mean, excuse me. That would be impossible. Some of you think you go through life without me. <laughs> Some of you go through thinking that you make a lot of mistakes and so it bothers you what people may think of you. Forget what people think of you. Do your best, live unto God and forget what people... Some of you would be just completely depressed if you realized how little people are thinking of you anyway. <laughs> you think... You, the problem is you got yourself on a pedestal. You, you think life revolves around you. And so therefore, no matter what you do or say, you think people are thinking something. You'd be pretty depressed if you realized how little they were thinking of it. Just, care, just get with God. Just be happy with Jesus and you'll see how free you can be. You can leave all your popularity chasing uh, at the door when you come into the kingdom of God. Amen. The kingdom of God is a whole new place to live. Amen. One definition of the kingdom of God, it says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink. It's not the outward religious things you might do. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. The kingdom of God is a way of life. Jesus said, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things are added, will be added to you. You have to seek a new way of living. Amen. You have to seek a new uh, perspective, a new system of being. That's right. Kingdom of God's a whole new system of being. Right. Yes. Isn't it? Yes. Here, let me help you here. <clears throat> let, me have you two, let me have you three come up here. It'll be fine. Oh, no, I don't need three. I just need the two guys. Sorry. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Uh, okay, you can come over here. Stand right in the middle here. You be Jesus. And uh, you be you. And um, stand right here in the middle. And I'm going to be the devil just for a little while. Just for a little while. Just for a little while. Got my hot pink shirt on and everything. Okay. Okay, now here's what I want you to do. You're, you're a believer and you're just going to live life, but you're living in the kingdom of God. All right? Mm -hmm. And so I want you to uh, <clears throat> just walk real slowly around Jesus. Your life centers around Jesus, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So it centers around Jesus. Just go real slowly around Him. You can go a little fast, but not, not too much. You'll get dizzy. So you're living for Jesus. Get, get pretty close to him, though. No, don't touch him, but just get close. <laughs> and I'm the devil. So he's in the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of ha has a certain way of life, okay? Uh, I'm going to be the devil, and I'm in charge of the kingdom of the world. There's, two, there's only two kingdoms to really live in and adhere to. Uh, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of the world. It's only two places. When you get saved, you get trans... Go slower. <laughs> get saved... You get translated out of the kingdom of the world or the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of His dear Son. Only two kingdoms, okay? So I'm the devil, and so he's in the kingdom of God. He's going the correct direction. I'm in the kingdom of the world, or I can say I'm the devil, and, and I'm going the complete opposite direction. Your goal as a Christian, now, now whatever I do, don't change your course, all right? Uh, throughout life, the devil... He's going to try to get you spinning in His direction. That, he, wants, he wants you to go His direction. And so He's going to tug on you every once in a while. And so what He wants you to do is act like the world acts. All right? And so, come on, I need you to go. Come on. It won't hurt you just for a little while. Just for a little while. It won't hurt you just for a little while. Okay. Go slow. Go slow. It's a mindset. It's a mindset. Uh, the, the world says, uh, take what you can get. The kingdom says, give what you can give. That's right. 
uh, the world says sit at the front and get some exposure. The scripture says sit in the back. The world says you better hoard some for a rainy day. And the scripture says give and it shall be given unto you. So the, the world's at complete op. The world says that, you know, if they're rude to you, we'll get them back. The scripture says, oh, don't ever retaliate. Love would never do that. The scripture says to hate you. I mean, the, the, the world says hate your enemies. And Jesus said, love your enemies. And so the devil's always going to try to throw you off a little bit. Uh, but the key is for you and I to live in the right system. The world says complain about the troubles of life to anyone who will listen. And no matter what the devil does to you, come on, get tough. Get tough. Come on. No matter what the devil does to you to get you off your course. All right, guys, thank you. Thank you. You get the picture. So if you ever have a question of how the kingdom of God operates and what it really means, uh, just do the opposite of the world and you'll be okay. The key is you and I have to focus on what's reality. God lives in... Where does the king live? Well, in his kingdom. If the kingdom's in you, then the king must be in you. So he rules and reigns in here, and you and I just have to focus on letting the king rule and reign in us. That's really our biggest issue is we're trying to reign or we're letting the world reign and just squeeze out all the life that's in us. But Jesus needs to be on the throne of our life. That's one of the only messages I remember from my younger years. It's the most prominent one for sure. I heard it at Young Life. I, I, they did a big demonstration where they had a big throne or a big chair sitting up on the front. The question was, who's on the throne of your life? You know, they'd put money on the thing or they'd put fame or fortune or education or friends. Or, or really, it's yourself. So the question was, who's on the throne of your life? Are you on the throne of your life or is Jesus on the throne of your life? And as a youngster, I remember thinking, I believe in Jesus, but I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm on the throne. Right. I'm the king of my own life. I knew that as a child. I knew I hadn't fully given my life up. I knew I hadn't devoted. I knew I wasn't fully consecrated. I knew I was harboring a lot of myself. I had a lot of my own self-will that I kept for myself. Okay? And then I also, in my mid-twenties, remember when I actually allowed Jesus to sit on the throne of my heart and take rulership as the king of my life. And that's what he wants for every one of you. If you'll let him be king of your life, oh, it'll just be so grand. Spiritual things will be happy again. I mean, delightful to you again. Or maybe for the first time, you'll have access to God the Father. You'll sense his holy presence. The Holy Spirit and his gifts and manifestations and his power will start moving in you. And you'll get answers to your prayers. Amen. And you'll have a life with the Father. He'll speak to you and you can hear him. Rather than just being an old deadbeat. Come on, we don't want anybody to just be old, old deaf, deaf Christian who can't hear God. We want you to be able to hear God. Where, if God speaks to you, where is He going to speak to you? Well, it's not going to be over here. It's going to be right here. If God speaks to you, He's going to speak from His throne, which is in, in your spirit. The kingdom's in you. He's going to speak from within you. Well, I heard these voices. Well, they weren't God. No, no. He's going to speak to you in your spirit, man. That's right. Of course, I realize an angel could appear and speak to you from the outside, or God himself could boom his voice from heaven, you'd hear your physical ear. But technically and primarily, you're going to hear God on the inside of you. The only place you're going to hear God is on the inside of you. And so stop looking for mega horns from heaven, and stop looking for leaves to fall out of the tree at the right moment, and stop looking for rainbows to direct you. <laughs> Well, we just got so much to do here. Thank you, Father. 
Thank you, Father. Breske de bon toxe be. Bam bra paskete de. Bam bra paskete. Bam bra paskete. Bam bra paskete. Bam bra paskete. Bam bra poskete. You've already got it. I've already given it. If you'll only receive it, you'll see it. If you'll only receive it, you'll have it. I've already given it. I've already promised it. I've already made it available. And it's already in you. If you'll receive it, acknowledge it, and go on and praise me for it, it'll come to pass in your life. And that is your answer for deliverance. That's your answer for your deliverance from things and weights and sins. That's your answer if you'll receive it, if you'll take it, if you'll praise me for it. It'll come to pass. Thanks, Father. Somebody here needs to be free of smoking. Whoever that is, whoever needs to be free of smoking. I'm just telling you, if you want to be free, just come up front right now. Whoever that is, there's somebody here that's been dealing with that with the Lord. It's just in a moment like that. God knows the desire of your heart, and He knows He's going to just deliver you, just deliver you, just deliver you. And it's just real simple. It's just real simple. There's somebody else. It's not just the only it? one. Yes, sir. It's over today? Yes. It's over today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, it's over today. Right yeah, now. God says it's done. <clears throat> God says it's done. And so as soon as you... as soon That's as it, this, man. It's over. Thank you. Rejoice. It's over. Rejoice. 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 Yeah. Rejoice. Anybody else want to get out of their seat? Anybody else? It's done. Don't wait for a feeling, brother. It's not in the feeling. It's right on the inside of you. You're going to realize that when you wake up in the morning, all the thought, all the whatever, it's just going to be totally gone. That is what's going to happen. Amen? Is there anybody else that wants to get out of their chair? Because I know that there's somebody else that's been dealing with this. Okay. All right. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's just that simple. Amen. It's just that simple. Faith is just about a simple decision, and then it's over. Hallelujah. If you know who's in you, then you can use your faith. Just use your faith and step out and decide it and do it. Don't budge from it. Be real determined. Like we were last week when we won the, the uh, tug of war. Just be real determined. Plant your feet. Plant your feet. I gave my team the secret to how you plant your feet. Yes, also the water. We found some competition and competitors at the picnic. But you have to realize that the fight of faith is quite the fight. And you have to win it. And you have to use the right strategy. And you have to know the secrets. And you have to realize your weaknesses. And you have to avoid those weaknesses. Isn't that right? I mean, if you can't see good out of your left eye, then you, you, have, to, you have to stay to the right of the fella. Just an example. I didn't watch any of the recent fights, but I heard, okay? So you, you fight watchers should understand how to fight the fight of faith. Ephesians chapter 3, glory, glory. hallelujah, glory. nothing's going to stop us, right. nothing's going to stop us, right. nothing's going to stop us, right. Ephesians 3 verse 16, that he would grant you according to the riches of his glory to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. Where are you strengthened at? In the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts. How? Through faith. That you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the width and length and depth and height. To know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. So what's in you? The fullness of God is in you. Everybody say, fullness of God. It's in me. It's in me. It's in me. The fullness of God is in me. Yes. 
Verse 20, Now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to what? According to the power that works where? In us. The power that works in us. In us. In us. You don't have to look out there for power. It's in you. What do you mean, brother? I am so glad you asked. Turn to Romans chapter 10. Yeah, there's power in you. There's power in you. If you'll keep the atmosphere of love, remember faith works by love. If you'll keep an atmosphere of love inside your heart, the love for God, the love for people, a, a right attitude, a good perspective, some optimism rather than depression and pessimism. Keep some holy, healthy, sound words going in your heart. Keep your atmosphere right. Oh, it's the breeding ground for faith. According to that is how miracles are going to happen yes. for you. Yes. Miracles don't come from the outside. They come from the kingdom of God, which is where? Yes. Miracles come from where? Yes. Inside you. Miracles come from where? Inside you. Miracles don't come from way off in the clouds, outer space. God has to get 18,000 miles to get to you. Miracles come from your spirit. Amen. Miracles come from right on the inside of you. That's right. Yeah. 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 Are you convinced? Yes. Romans chapter 10. We'll show you how the first main miracle happened to you. What's the first main miracle that happened to you? Your salvation. That's a grand miracle where your spirit man is recreated, where your sins are washed away, where you're regenerated, made new, redeemed. That's a big miracle. Amen. When God takes hold of a human heart. That's a big deal. That's a big one. That's the big bang. That's the, really the big bang. Wham! You got born again in an instant. How did that happen? How did that first big miracle happen for you? Same way all the other miracles can happen to you. Same way all the other miracles can happen to you. Romans chapter 10 verse, verse 8. But what does it say? The Word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. Yep, it's in me. That is the Word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart inside you one believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So the miracle is actually in your heart and in your mouth. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. The Word of faith the miracle working, saving power of God is in your heart and in your mouth. Amen. And that's why it matters what you believe and it matters what you say. Yes. Yes. Amen. It doesn't matter how religious you act. Amen. It doesn't matter how many steps of tradition you follow. What does matter is what's in your heart and what comes out of your mouth. Yes. And so if you want to make a miracle for your life, you make it from your heart and your mouth. Right. That means you take a scripture and you confess it until it gets in your heart. And then you say it just one more time. All it takes, once it's in your heart, just say it one more time Amen. and a miracle happens. Amen. Amen. So we confess scripture not so that we can... Some people are trying to accumulate some worth to God. Well, if I prove that I like to go to church a lot and quote a lot of scripture, then God will, you know, feel it, you know, deem it necessary and good to help me. So, so that's partly why people uh, have, a, have a need and then feel like, well, let me get a prayer chain going. Let me tell everybody in the whole wide world that I know, you know, we're going we're gonna to really bombard heaven and see if God, see if we can accumulate enough prayers that God would f uh, feel good enough to uh, answer our prayer. You don't have to do all that. He's inside you. The kingdom's inside you. We just need a little faith. We just need to step out and believe something. We just need to step out and say something. Jesus said, whatever you say, you can have. And that's how you make miracles happen for yourself or somebody else. You tell the sickness, disease, or infirmity to come out, it'll come out. You just got to believe that. That's how miracles are made. That's why Jesus spoke to demons. That's why Jesus spoke to sicknesses so often. How many of you have spoken to your bank account? Amen. If you're in need, you better speak to it. It's speaking to you. Come on, if you're in financial distress, that thing speaks to you all the time. Some people have, some of you have huge debts. You need to speak to the mountain of debt and tell it. Well, that seems so silly. Okay, fine. Seems silly to 
to get saved by what I say as well. It makes more sense to try to earn some salvation. To the natural mind, it makes sense to try to be real good for the rest of your life, see if you can earn some salvation. Amen. That doesn't make any sense either. But it's God's way. It's God's plan. It's the law of faith. And faith has a certain system to it. Totally different than the way you'd think. But that's how you're going to change your own life. That's how you're going to increase. That's how you're going to succeed. That's how you're going to get promoted. It's going to be about what you believe and by what you say. So miracles are actually not out there and not up there. They're inside you. Glory. Yeah. Glory, yeah. Amen. Yeah. Glory. That's right. Glory. Woo. Glory. Good. We'll go ahead and end there. I'll wrap up with just a few quote, quote scriptures here. John chapter 14, Jesus said, I'll send you the comforter and he shall be in you. He's been with you and now He's going to be in you. Remember in 1 John He says that the anointing abides in you and the same anointing will teach you all things. And then also in the same chapter it says you have an unction from the Holy One and you know all things. You have an anointing from the Holy One who's in you and you know all things. So all your answers are inside you. All your answers are in your spirit. I guess y'all don't need any answers. Some of you do need answers. Maybe it was over here. Some of you need answers. They're inside you. You know all things inside you. You just have to tap in there. How do you do that? You stir yourself up. How do you do that? You pray in tongues. How do you do that? Some of you need to be filled with the Spirit so you can tap into the spiritual things. Some of you have been filled with the Spirit, but you don't pray in tongues anymore, and so you're not stirred up, and so you can't tap into these things. I mean, for, to get from your head to your heart, you're going to have to pray in tongues. Amen. To get from up here to down here, you're going to have to quote Scripture, pray in tongues, read your Bible, Amen. and spend some time with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And then, I, But if you don't do it, I can't help you. If you don't do those things, I can't help you. I can't force you to do them, neither can God. Don't you wish God would just force you to be perfect? Yes. Don't you wish He'd just force you to do all things holy and right? Don't you wish He'd just force you to get your miracle? Don't you wish He'd just plop it right in your lap? Man, it's just not like that. It's, it's spiritual and you've got to go into the Spirit. Not, you don't even know where the Spirit is. Well, until today, it's in there. Where's the kingdom? Don't look around outside. He's in here. Yeah. You don't got to go chasing, you know, church all over the city. You don't got to go chasing meetings. That's right. It's right inside That's right. me. Right inside me. Preach it. Preach it. If you're hearing good preaching and teaching else all over the place, that's wonderful. It's designed to establish you enough so where when you need the kingdom, you can go in there. Yep. And then eventually you live in the kingdom. Your mind is in the kingdom. The way you act and talk and think is in the kingdom. And then when you need a miracle, boy, you don't have to go through a rigmarole. He's just, you're in there. We just get a miracle. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, there's some moments where you're, you're so, so in the flesh it takes quoting Scripture three hours. And then all of a sudden, I finally get to my miracle. But once you get, get familiar with how the Lord works and how the Spirit of God works in you, then all of a sudden you can just boom, you can just tap in anytime. You can just tap in anytime. I can just go to God anytime and I know He heard me. Amen. But it's got to get in your heart. The Word has to get in your heart. Jesus said, My words are life and there's Spirit in their life. You got to get His Word in your heart. Thank you for joining us for the preaching of God's Word. We trust that your faith and your love for God is stronger than ever before. Chaz and Joni Stevenson have a New Testament vision of spreading the full gospel of Christ around the world, helping unbelievers meet Jesus Christ, and building strong Christians who can impact their world, and are doing so by preaching the uncompromised Word of God with the power of the Holy Spirit. To join us in that vision, please consider an offering to help with media costs, or an offering to simply show the value of the spiritual things you have received. You may give online, by mail, or by phoning in with a credit card. If you're in Houston, Texas, and looking for a good home church, Pastors Chaz and Joni invite you to a spirit-filled, life-changing service at Houston Faith Church. 
where we're certain you'll experience the love and goodness of God in a real and powerful way. For more information about God, Houston Faith Church, or Stevenson Ministries, please visit us on the web, where you can now watch services via live streaming and find many other life-changing resources, or download our Houston Faith phone app.